snow leopards. Have you ever wanted to paint a snow leopard? Well, today that is what we're going to be doing. While I am painting, actually, I'm going to be explaining to you a little bit about the snow leopard's habitat, its lifestyle, and its biological makeup. These things are really important to know if you're going to be an artist painting these kind of animals. And before I go any further, I do want to explain about somebody I'm very appreciative of, and that is Bernd Atner of Wildlife TV. About six or maybe eight weeks ago, I discovered his channel, and I was so intrigued. It is filled with animals and wildlife scenes, and he does really nice narration, too, on some of his animals. He had a video on the snow leopard. I really loved it, and so I left a little message, may I paint your snow leopard? And he wrote back and said, yes. And so thank you, Bernd, for allowing me to paint your snow leopards. And guys, the two pictures that you see, these pictures are snaps from that video. And I have linked his channel in the description below, and you can go directly to his snow leopard video and watch it also. I'll link that at the end so you can continue watching this. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about the painting beginning, and then I'll take you on the snow leopard journey on its habitat and lifestyle. So I am using six colors for this particular painting, and I realized as I was, well, after I was painting, that I used these same six colors on a cat, a tabby cat picture about a month ago. Same colors, totally different effect. With these colors, I wanted to create a cold atmosphere with the snow leopard, even though the picture that Bernd has is kind of a warm spring with moss and little red blushes of twi you know, the twigs have a red blush in them. I wanted to cool all of this down and put the snow leopard in a cool, cold atmosphere. That's where they live. So I changed, I used the reference, and I just changed the feeling of it with these six colors. And by the way, the six colors are titanium white, black, which I hardly ever use, but I use that to desaturate the very brilliant phthalo blue. And those are my three primary colors. Then I use just a little hint of the burnt sienna, the crimson, and the yellow ochre. Okay, so now let's begin our journey to the land of the snow leopard. And we're going to go to this vast area where they roam and that's in the northern and central Asian mountains, the highest mountains. And we're going to go above the tree line. The snow leopards principally live between 3,000 and 5,500 meters, and that's about 10,000 to 18,000 feet. Snow leopards live in 12 countries, Mongolia, China, Nepal, Bhutan, India, Pakistan, and the other Stan countries, as well as Russia. The snow leopards are called the ghost of the mountains. And that is because they are very shy and elusive and they really dislike people. So if people are around, they become even more nocturnal. They are very solitary creatures. And if you ever see two snow leopards together, you can probably assume that one is a mother and the other is a cub or maybe they're two siblings that have just left the mother, separated from the mother, and are now finding their way out in the world before they leave, before they lead their solitary life. Which brings us to a really interesting fact that there is no group noun for the snow leopard. And when I say a group noun, you know we talk about a group of lions is called a pride, a group of tigers is called a streak, or I also found that they're also called a ambush, which is kind of cool. Jaguars are called a prowl. Leopards, the common leopards, a group of them is called a leap. Panthers are called a claw. Oh my goodness. Cheetahs are called a coalition. Cougars are called a range. And then your common house cat. It has three different names. One is a clouder. Never heard of that. Clutter. Never heard of that either, and I love this one, a pounce. So a group of house cats is called a pounce. 
add that one to your vocabulary. It's kind of cute. Okay, so what do snow leopards eat? Well, they live above the tree line, and so they're going to eat the big animals above the tree line, and those are the blue sheep, our golly sheep, and the ibex. And these animals are much bigger than the snow leopard, but the snow leopard has the power to take down an animal three times its size. If they can't get these larger animals, they will eat things like the marmots, the pika, the deer, and other small animals, but they do prefer the large animals. And in Nepal, the blue sheep, which is really not blue, is the main prey of the snow leopard. And one blue sheep will feed one leopard for one week. Now, the high altitudes are very suitable for the lifestyle, the characteristics of these snow leopards. These leopards are very acrobatic. They jump, they leap, they spin. They have very flexible, wide feet. And these flexible feet are really good for gaining uh, traction on the ground, for snowshoeing across the snow, and also for maintaining balance on these really precipice cliffs. They do like these rocky, steep, broken terrain, and they're biologically suited for it in other ways, too. They have very short forelegs and quite long hind legs, and this kind of makeup helps them to leap and thrust upwards as they go up the mountain and jump up cliffs. They can actually jump six meters high, and that is 20 feet. If they have a running leap horizontally, they can jump six times their body length, and that is 15 meters or 50 feet. You put these guys in the Olympics and they're going to come home with some serious, serious medals. Anyway, so the snow leopards are by far the most acrobatic and energetic of the big cats. And that brings us to, are they a big cat? Because there are it has been biologically determined that there are five big cats, but only in 2017 was the snow leopard added to the big cats. Before that, it had its own category. It's called the Uncia Uncia, and now it's called the Panthera Uncia, and the Panthera category is where the big cat term is. So let me give you a little explanation of the whole cat family so you can see what I'm talking about. Here is a picture, and you can see that the cat family falls under two subfamilies, and that is the Pantherinae and the Felinae. And think of feline or Felinae. And your common house cat is under the Felinae. So the Pantherinae, the big cat category, is broken down into two genuses. There is the Panther, which is the larger big cats, and there's the Neophils, Neophils, and I believe there was another genus before. I can't, think, I can't find this exactly, but I think that's where the Uncia genus was because the snow leopard was thought to be of its own genus until 2017. But in 2017, there was a lot of genetic uh, recategorization, and scientists have determined that the snow leopard is most surprisingly like the tiger and not like a leopard at all. And that was when it underwent this reclassification and now it is called the Panthera, big cat, Panthera uncia. And its closest neighbor or its closest cousin, I guess you could say, is the tiger. So there's the Panthera tigris and the Panthera uncia. Now, there is a debate whether the snow leopard actually is a big cat. And part of this debate is functioning around two big points that are biologically interesting. One point is that the big cats, when they eat, they're kind of lazy and they lay down and they eat. Nope, the snow leopard does not lay down. It hunches over its food. And if you ever watch your house cat eat, it also hunches over its food. Rarely do you ever see a cat laying down to eat. It just doesn't happen much. Another characteristic of the big cats is that they all roar. Well, they all did roar until the panthera uncia, or the snow leopard, was added to the group. The snow leopard 
does not roar. It doesn't have the capacity, I don't know the scientific method, but it, it cannot roar. It yowls, and it's this piercing yowl that can be heard over the roar of a river. It's pretty scary, actually, from what I hear. The snow leopard also mews, growls, and get this, it chuffs like a tiger. And the chuff is that vocalization in the throat with kind of like a, not a nasal ex exhalation of air. I'm going to chuff. <sighs> okay, I'm not very good at chuffing. But anyway, <laughs> the snow leopard chuffs just like the tiger. Now, probably the most unique characteristic of the snow leopard is its tail. Totally unique. Among all of the cats, it has the longest tail among them percentage-wise to the length of the body. In fact, 40 to 50% of the length of the body is that tail, which is a very long tail. So why does it have such a long tail? Well, that tail is very thick and it's filled with fat. So there's a fat storage in that tail. It's also very long to help it with balance because, you know, on those cliffs, it needs to have a lot of balance. But the bigger function than those two even is that that tail is so long that it can be wrapped around the body, particularly the nose, and keep the face warm. It functions like a blanket. So the tail has a very primary use for the snow leopard, unlike the other big cats. Now let's talk about the fur. The fur is also very, very thick on the snow leopard. In fact, it's two inches thick, or five centimeters, on the side and on the back. And obviously from my snow leopard, I need to add a lot more fur. And that's one thing I was adding, uh, just because I don't have enough fur on it. So it looks like a tiger, actually, which I guess it's okay because the tiger is its biggest, closest cousin. But the fur on the belly is even longer. That fur on the belly is 12 centimeters long, or five inches. It is very, very thick. About the patterning on that fur, those little patterns are called rosettes. And the rosettes are very unique to the jaguar, which is not considered one of the big cats. So the jaguars and the leopards all have rosettes. Oftentimes, even scientists have trouble noting the difference between the jaguar and the leopard. They have to look really closely. And here is the difference. It's a visual difference. The jaguar has a black dot in the middle of their rosette, and the snow leopards, or any of the leopards, don't have that black dot. So that is one of the big distinguishing characteristics between the leopard, common leopard and the jaguar. Another characteristic about those little rosettes is like the human fingerprint, all of our fingerprints are very unique to us. The same goes for those rosette patterns on the jaguars and on the leopards. Those ro rosette patterns are unique to each animal. And so as I was painting mine, I wasn't particularly careful about copying the picture exactly. I just kind of made it up. That's okay because my snow leopard is unique and it has its own unique print and it looks realistic how I painted it. So guys, this is my largest painting to date and it includes a lot of commentary about the snow leopard. I have my second largest painting which was the African lion and it also has a fair amount of commentary. If you are interested in watching another video that has a lot of commentary about nature, then this might be of interest to you. And guys, please do remember to look in the description below because Bernd Atner's channel and his snow leopard video is linked there and it's something that I think you would really enjoy.